considered the world's most famous love story. And in about two weeks, uh, two and a half weeks, you're gonna be able to see Romeo and Juliet at the Houston Ballet. Our next guest is playing Paris. Now, not only is he a talented dancer, but he's also a social media sensation. And Vogue is saying he is redefining ballet style. Joining us now is the one and only Harper Waters. Yay! It is an honor to have you here on the couch with us today. I'm so excited to be here. I don't know if you remember this, but Sarah and I hosted the Face Awards. It was maybe 2015 or 2016. Okay, yes. And you won an award, and we just looked at each other and we were like, That's he has thing. got it. You had it, and that was, I don't even know how many years ago, and look where you're at right now. I know, it's incredible to think back at that time because I feel like I was just starting out not only my social media journey, but my career at Houston Ballet. I was in the core, and to be a first soloist right now, and to be the highest ranked black dancer in the company, the highest ranked queer dancer in the company, and I think my colleagues would say the most fabulous of all. <laughs> um, it's just, it's, it's a real testament to the work ethic that I've had over the past few years, and I'm just so proud um, to be doing it in a city like Houston. We're so excited for you. How long have you been dancing though? I mean, this has been a lifelong oh journey for you, right? Yes, uh, from the little age of six, uh, I put my first pair of tap shoes on. Um, I might have done my own one-man nutcracker uh, while I broke my nose actually <gasps> at home. I know, mom, don't show the, don't show the pictures. <laughs> Um, but I think taking it seriously, I moved away from home when I was 14 to boarding school to pursue dance, and then I moved to Houston when I was 16, and I am currently in my 12th season at the Houston Ballet. And you haven't looked back since, right? No. And how important is it to you for the representation that you have, not only on social media, but on the stage? Think about when you first started dancing at such a young age, yeah. not seeing anyone who looked like you or thought like you, and yeah. now you being the face of that. I mean, I, you take a deep breath in because that's obviously got to be yeah. an overwhelming feeling, but also what an honor. Yeah, you know, I really live by the motto that visibility is currency, and it's not necessarily a monetary one. It's for being the permission slip for people to say, I can step into the studio, I can pursue my passion, and I am so honored to be a queer black dancer in this company, um, but I have to pay homage to the people before me like Lauren Anderson and um, Alvin Ailey and other dancers who inspired me and they're the shoulders that I stand on. So we cannot let you out of here though without jumping into your social media account. All right, <laughs> oh, <gosh. laughs> the heels yes. on the treadmill. Mm -hmm. Sarah and I cannot walk in them, and you are this incredible powerhouse Bam. dancing on a treadmill in heels, and I'm talking to, like perfectly coordinated and in sync with this music. It's insane. How did you get into this? Okay, I look at that and I'm like, that person is insane, and then I realize that <laughs> it's, it's me. <laughs> Gorgeously insane, Absolutely. I will say. Absolutely. You know, it. It really started as a joke. My friend wanted to do a night in drag, and my other friend and I, we were like, we don't want to. And that was just because of the timing uh, in 2015, I think, and we were like, we don't feel comfortable doing it. Um, but he pushed us to do it, we put it on, and it was this confidence booster. It gives you this energy. and. I carried that energy with me into my classical dancing. Did I bring the heels on stage with me when I did Prince? I did not. Okay, I was <laughs> very but concerned. the confidence that it gave yes. me, I saw my dancing improve when I started to embrace every single aspect of who I was. And that confidence is what you can see in Romeo and Juliet when I perform the role of Paris February, 23rd, February 23rd to March 5th um, at the Wortham because it's a complex role, it's complex characters, and you have to pull from your life that you people wanna see real people up on this stage. And so it's it sounds crazy, but the heels and the treadmill, they complement my classical dance. It dancing. doesn't sound crazy no. because any lady can tell you or anybody else wearing <laughs> yes. heels, when you put a pair of heels on, you immediately stand up straight. Taller, it gives yeah. you that confidence. Yeah. And I mean, I can only imagine where else it could absolutely help know, you in your I'm, dance. And I'm trying to get to the level of our record-breaking Grammy winner, <laughs> Beyonce. <laughs> I want to be like her. <laughs> Can you know you that back in the day, she used to have to practice with her heels on and her shoes on. Yes, so. anything to be just I a know. fraction of what she's achieved. As far as Romeo and Juliet, this is going to be a really great role for yes. you. 
What is what is most exciting when performing here at home, mm -hmm. doing something that you love to do mm -hmm. in, in front of all of these adoring fans? Mm -hmm. I mean, from all over. What's what's the best part about it? Well, what's so incredible about this particular production is that it was choreographed in 2015, and so we're revisiting it. And uh, to come back to such an iconic love story like Romeo and Juliet, especially after the past few years that we've had, um, to come back and to give our all to full company production, not just filled with incredible dancing, but there's sword fighting, there's acting, there's the the leading dancers, it's so inspiring. We had rehearsal the other day and they're pouring their hearts into these roles. And to have a city like Houston embrace us and to come and fill those seats and watch it, it's really inspiring and I'm so excited to revisit it now in a role like Paris um, and to tell our story. You know, we're telling our stories as dancers, as a company, and um, oh, look at us, we look so good. You look so good. <laughs> the drama. The drama. <laughs> yeah, it's right up there with Beyonce. But you know, same it's thing. yeah, exactly the same, same thing. thing. But you no, know, it's really, really special. Like it's, it's dance is this unspoken art, right? Like we, we, we have to use our body to say it. And so it's, it's an incredible, unique feeling to call yourself a ballet dancer. And I would encourage people to come to the show to see what that means. It's an incredible uh, big deal for us to call you our friend, Harper. Oh, I'm so You're excited. such an Thank inspiration. You. Thank you I for everything. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Best of luck. Yeah, for sure. Well, if you would like to connect with Harper, we've put a link to his website and the Houston Ballet at HoustonLife.tv. Just look for the Scene On section. Coming up, we'll meet another dancer putting a spotlight on the Houston's world-class ballet community. Ten-year-old Bane Griffith moved to New York just last week to start in the MJ musical. We'll find out what it's like to go from elementary school to Broadway. Now let's check in with Mel Camp, who is on an organizing binge today, and she's found the wine. <laughs> Now this is my kind of organized space. We've come to Closet Factory in North Houston to get some tips from the experts on how to declutter your life and make it look this fabulous. Stick around, that's coming up on Houston Life.
back to Houston Life. Derek is off today, but I am here with my bestie, Sarah Pepper, and we just got over the hump of the new year, and now on to spring and spring cleaning. Oh, you know how it goes. Clean home, clean mind. Well, Mel Camp has some tips from the pros how to achieve both. So I am in North Houston. I have come to the Closet Factory to get some tips from their experts on how to declutter and organize your life. And look what I found. Check this out. It is a false bottom drawer with a secret compartment. And I think that would be a really good place to hide your junk. Okay, I don't think that's a decluttering tip. I need to go find an expert. Working as a designer at Closet Factory, Emily Stovall has seen a lot of spaces in need of organising. Emily, it's that time of year when you got to sort of think about spring cleaning and getting organised, but where do you start? Well, I like to start with purging your clothes and getting rid of um, things that you haven't worn in a year or two. One of my coworkers, she's a lot more ruthless than I am, and she says one year, get rid of it. Another tip is to throw everything in the middle of the room and then put back your favorite items, and then whatever doesn't fit or you don't like anymore, donate or throw away. We do it in stages. You don't need to do it all at one time, so just start with your handbags and shoes. And then in a week or two, you can start with your t-shirts and long sleeve shirts that you don't wear too often. What are some out of the box ideas that can be really helpful for organizing in a closet that people might not think of? Right, so a lot of our clients are women and they have a lot of jewelry and they just don't know how to store them. So a good way to do it is to do a vertical jewelry drawer and you can completely nice. customize it compared nice. to whatever jewelry you have. Ooh, that is fantastic. Yeah. You could even add some lighting in there to highlight everything. Another great feature our clients love to add to their closets or laundry rooms is a tilt out and then a pull out ironing board. Um, it's completely 360 swivels, so whatever direction you're in, it'll still work. Without a major overhaul, what are some quick hacks for anyone who wants to freshen up their closet? Yeah, you could organize it by color, you could organize it by season, you can even throw all of your winter stuff into bins, so that way you're not sifting through and it's easy to find and you're not wasting as much space in your closet. Drawer dividers are all the new rage, so you can divide and organize all of your undergarments. Um, another thing that everybody always hates is when their boots are always flopped over, so we have boot hooks that will slide on a rod. That is amazing because my boots actually flop over they and do, I never yeah. even thought of that. Mm -hmm. What's the secret to staying organized? Because I think that's the trickiest thing. Once you've right. decluttered, how do you stay organized? Having the good bones to a closet is essential because you need to put, you need to have somewhere to put everything. So if you don't have that stuff, then it, it stay, it's hard to stay organized over time. And no matter what room in your life you need to get in order, if you start by building the right storage system, you can set yourself up for long-term success. If you have a place that's organized, a place to put things, generally you're gonna go put those things back. It's when we fill that space and it starts to overflow and then we start to pack things into that space. So that's really where we are skilled to be able to come in and say, hey, you can actually add some, some organization here and we can do that in this way. And don't think the size of your space limits your potential for getting organized. So a lot of clients don't have these big giant spaces so we love to show off this closet and it's there's so much going on in just this little space. We have the vanity with the mirror and then some lighting to highlight your vanity and we also have the jewelry inserts in the drawers. No matter what the space there is always a creative way to customize a storage solution. Cool okay it's a hideaway bed. Yeah, so it just hides away, and then now you have all this room and all this space, so it looks nice to me. We will build your units, and, and then we can always come in and add drawers later. Um, a shelving section can be turned into a drawer section later on, so that you can do it in phases. So if someone's wanting to try to work within a certain budget, and then they want to just do it in steps, uh, we can do that. We can accommodate that. Making it easy for you to get and stay organized. Thank you so much, Mel. Those are some great ideas. If you need help getting organized, we put a link to Closet Factory at the Scene On section of HoustonLife.tv. All right, coming up from Houston to New York, a local elementary school student is now starring on Broadway. And after the break, Lauren chats with Bain Griffith how he landed the big gig and what he misses most about Houston. We'll be right back with more Houston Life.
the last week of your life? Was it crazy? I bet nobody can beat what's happened to our next guest. Not only did he move across the country to New York, he is now starring on Broadway in MJ the Musical. And oh yeah, did we mention that he's in elementary school? Joining me now via Zoom is Bane Griffith, who was just a student at River Oaks Elementary School. Bane, it is an honor. We cannot believe the news when we heard it. Congratulations on your new big role. So much, neither could I. I'm still in shock. I did not even think I'd make it like this. So tell everybody how this exciting new role came about. How did this all happen? Well, two years ago, when I, had, I, when I was still new to acting, we got this audition for MJ the Musical as Little Michael, and they had us do acting and singing, and scene, and, and I had to sing. And then they wanted me to do a second callback, so I was really excited because they liked me, and I did dancing. But then they said they loved me, but I would have to have the, the vaccine. But at that time, they didn't have it for my age group, so I wasn't able to do that. So then the second time, I did it last year in July, and I did it again, and then they asked me to go to New York for another callback in person. And then after that, it was two days. And after that, it was two days. And I came back a second time. And then they told me that I'd gotten the part. And what was really interesting was before I left for, to go back to Houston, after my second callback, they said that they wanted me to do another thing. And they had me sing an extra song that I wanted to. And I chose Shallow by Lady Gaga and Bradley Cooper. So I feel like that may have been one of the reasons why they picked me. That was what did it. That is super exciting. It sounds a lot of, of waiting and auditioning and waiting again. Now, Bain, you're only 10 years old, but how long have you been performing? Well, ever since I could remember, I would always like to watch the ice skaters. And then I realized that, that ice skating is basically ballet, but on ice. So I would try to do those moves. After that, I went to a camp called Talented 10 Theater, and I did my first acting, my acting plays there. And that's what really started me to get into acting. And then I had a singing coach, Jalen Janice, after then, who, who taught at the camp. And they've all taught me so many things, and now I'm here. Well, you are just an adorable triple threat. You sing, you dance, you perform and act. Are you a big fan of Michael Jackson? Yes, always. I, uh, ever since I was born, my, my sister and my mom would always play on the TV ABC and all those different songs by the Jackson 5. Can you tell our viewers a little bit about the musical MJ that's on Broadway that you're in right now? It is... It was made by an expert, like Lynn Nottage.